the way I got out of North Block was very interesting. My crime partner went to the Blacks on the Bayside Fifth Tier, and he asked him to sign a petition for me to get out of segregation. Now, that had never been done before. The idea that the Blacks would sign a petition to get a white boy out of segregation. But of course, what people didn't know is that we were selling the, this black guy speed uh, on the line. It was one of the businesses we were doing. So. so you'd become a drug dealer. Well, I didn't handle that particular side of the business, but uh, I was, it was part of our thing, yeah. <laughs> so how long now before you get out? What's your year of release? Well, it, it, what happened was after I got, you know, I, got, I didn't get stabbed. I got nicked. So yeah. I had three bandages on me. So it was interesting when I went to the showers, when I got out of North Block, all the blacks were like eyeing me, eyeing me for all these stab wounds that they were told by the, by the bros that, that uh, I'd been afflicted on. But in fact, it was three nicks. I had three bandages. Anyway, <laughs> I think that bought me some what um, um, credit with the, with the, uh, what, the uh, California Department of Corrections in the sense that I was a potential problem because my mother was a sort of quite a well-known professor at the university. And my father had a high-powered job with the World Bank. And the idea that I'd been attacked in a racial attack, I think it gave me nobody. I never found this out, and I don't know if that's true. But I think that I got the benefit of the doubt for release on parole. So I was released on parole. What is your relationship with your parents like at this point? Are you going back to the house? Or? No, no, I was, I was, they'd, they cut you they'd, off. They'd washed their hands of me. Basically, yeah. I'd shamed them. Not only shamed them, but, it's, but I'd got my brother killed in their eyes. So, oh my God, yeah. So there was, there was, you know, I mean, what? <laughs> you think some of your aggressive behavior that came about, the, th the thing with the police and the shootout and your brother's death, do you think you, you, you had like a rage and a, a turmoil and a chaos just, just, going inside you because of going through all this that then came out you know you starting to do this these uh things that could potentially end up with you dead robbing drug dealers going up against hell's angels working for the mafia do you think one fed into the other or do you think you've just got a natural there's something in you that you um you don't strike me like as a big tough guy but there's an aura about you of not to be messed with like you've got a serious energy that comes off you well, I believe that everybody has this spirit in them. I think it's human instinct. I mean, we, we went from, what, 100,000 years of living on the savanna with the lions. I think it's in all of us. And the thing is, it's in our civilized life, you don't get called upon unless you go off to war, for example. But I was in the deep end, and I had to find that instinct and... and, and revel in it if i didn't <laughs> who knows where it would have ended up right yeah i certainly wouldn't have been happy with myself so as, as in terms of rage i would say no because i'm quite cool-headed in fact in times of extreme action i i usually make the right move i don't know why but it usually works out that way and, I, and the reason i tell you this is because in these shootouts people each time someone's died, and the same thing happened to me as happened to them, but they went down and I didn't. So call it luck, I don't know. Maybe it's luck, some instinct, I don't know. But I wouldn't say it's rage. I, th I think, I mean, to be honest, I think guys in prison, the guys who come to prison, come to prison because they do things they like doing. I don't, I don't look that in terms of psychological, um, what deep psychological reasons? I, I have a feeling you do what you want to do. So, I made. I remember each decision that I made, and I made the decisions, and I put myself in the situation, and nobody forced me to. In fact, it was going against all the common sense I learned, you know, in my upbringing. I mean, I didn't have a bad upbringing. I've got no. No reason for to exclaim that, but I will say, you got to have some excitement in your life, and I certainly got that in spades. 
to this experience. Where do you go now you've been released? Well, are you talking my final release? Or no, no, my... we're just getting out of California uh, Department of Corrections. Well, <sighs> consider the situation. I got released, and about half of the guys who were part of my tip have been released too. So we just basically formed a gang, a criminal gang out on the street and went to the next level. Um, so when I say the next level, I remember one time we were called upon to, you know, some, some Chinese restaurant owner hadn't paid a debt and people were afraid to deal with them because of the triad connection. But we, out of San Quentin, we weren't afraid of anything. So we went over and uh, grabbed him and, you know, convinced him to do, to do what he should. But the problem is, of course, the big, the the more what ripples in the pond you cause, the sooner comes uh, the attention of the uh, the higher levels of law enforcement. So, so did you have to leave California in a hurry? Rapidly, eventually, rapidly, rapidly. Yes. What gave you a heads up that something was going to go down? You felt the need to leave. Well, I mean. In my particular instance, I was driving down the highway and this, this uh, patrolman pulled me over and, you know, I had a gun in my bag, and, you know, I mean, it was an instant straight back to San Quentin routine. So I thought, well, that, I'm not up for that. So I escaped from him and uh, decided it was time to uh, move to another country. And you chose Canada. Mm. And how easy was it just to move to Canada for you? It was no problem at all. I just got on the bus and uh, crossed into Canada. You lone wolf in it now, or your crimes coming over there? With well, you as well? They, they decided it was time. Two of them decided it was time that they might like Canadian vacation too. So. And these are the notorious ones I've read about yes. in certain articles. Yes. Okay, so things going to get really heavy with these guys. Well, the actu there actually was a plan, but it was kind of, um, there was a gold refinery that I used to, that, that I knew of in the Canadian mountains. And so we thought we might just, just wander up there and you know, see what was what. There was no, nothing particular dramatic about it, but it was, you know, but it never got to that. The Canadians uh, had been, uh, I guess they'd been informed. So basically, we stepped into a trap. What was the trap exactly? Well, the car broke down, and I took it to a garage to be repaired. And when I went to pick it up, um, as I was talking to the garage owner, he started acting very strange and looking over his looking over his shoulder at this door, and I got bad vibes from him. So I. I sort of backed up a bit and suddenly two guys in plain clothes burst out of the, the room and went to tackle me and I backed away from them and my friend, an American guy, was outside and he saw these guys coming for me and, uh, well, as far as he was concerned, I was being attacked so he shot one of them through the leg and told the other not to move and they were turned out to be undercover um, RCMP officers. Anyway, there were two more of them, and one other one came from behind and uh, shot him twice. Shot him, and as I said before, he went down, but they clipped his back of his tongue, and um, so he was bleeding heavily. But unfortunately, he was on his back, and so in the thirty forty minutes before an ambulance came, he drowned in his own blood. So, well, how did you manage to get out of the situation? Well. Unfortunately, the guy who shot him then tried to shoot me. So I had this RCMP officer that I was sort of punching in the face regularly. And by this time, he was kind of punch drunk. And so I, I tried, I held him. I, I wanted to hold him in place um, so this other guy couldn't shoot me. And the other guy was sort of angling for his shot because, of course, you know, their blood's up and they've already clipped one guy. 
And fortunately, this the last policeman came out who hadn't seen all this drama, and he ran over and smashed me in the face with his pistol. And instead of being shot, I just had my nose broken. So and that ended it. So you got arrested though? 